<clears throat> all right, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Habrakak Badash. I'm going to give double honors to Apostle Tahar and other elders, uh, elders and apostles that are in the spirit, whose labors we have entered into. Uh, I'm not really sure what I want to name this video, but I want to get into it. You know, basically, it's, you know, just talking about cyber hackers and different things like that. And this video, it is from six years ago, but y'all got to listen to what the guy going to say, you know, and this is six years ago. So how much more now? So um, it just I, I was just looking at some stuff on the news break at right under my recent searches. Yeah. And it's just been like so much five days ago, six days ago, 11 days ago, a couple hours ago. Right. Uh, 10 hours ago, North Korean hackers still 620 million and one of the biggest, uh, biggest ever crypto heists. So it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on with this uh, with these cyber attacks, man. You know, even before, I think it was just like just recently, about about a year ago, what not the uh, North Colonial Pipeline or something like that. I got hit with the um, a, a cyber attack, man. You know, and that, and that caused uh, price hikes for the, uh, for the for the for the gas as well. So, man, this is this is this is coming. This is definitely coming. So just listen up. Nature is at it again. Most of the time, we manage to get through it. But what if the power went out in a number of states, affecting millions of people for weeks, even months? As you were researching this, did you personally find yourself getting frightened? I think frightened is a little bit too strong, but maybe I should have been. Yes, it's frightening. It is frightening enough that uh, <laughs> my wife and I decided we were going to buy enough freeze-dried food for all of our kids and their kids. In his book, Lights Out, veteran journalist Ted Koppel paints a grim picture of a paralyzing power outage in the form of an all-out cyber attack on the nation's electrical grid. Listen up. Who are the potential perpetrators here? Who do we have to fear the most? Is it Russia, China, Iran, terrorists, yeah. uh, individual actors? All those. The interesting thing, Chip, is um, the ones who are most capable are the ones least likely to do it. There are some experts who say they're already in. Oh, they are in. See, nah, see, Esau doesn't understand. He's talking about the ones that are capable. The ones that are capable are China, you know, definitely Russia. He's about to explain, you know, uh, they're already in the system, right? But he doesn't understand prophecy. They are in. There in. is no question about it. They're they, into our grid. They are already in the grid. I was told that by the former... And, and then another another point to that topic, right? This is from six years ago. So he says they're the least, they're, they're the, uh, least likely to do it. But will he be saying that? Will, will, will he reiterate that statement if he sees what's going on in, in the world today with Russia and Ukraine and whatnot and NATO? All right, then. Chief scientist of NSA. He stated categorically the Russians are in, the Chinese are in. The Iranians may be on the verge of getting in. And then at the bottom of the capability scale are folks like ISIS, terrorist groups. The power grid is the system interconnecting North America's supply of electricity. If one area has particularly heavy demand, power from another region can sometimes serve as backup. But yeah, that's that's really what I wanted to get into right there. You know, the the uh the Edomite basically just said it, yo, uh uh Russia's already in America's electrical grid. These countries already have access to do everything they need to do to shut America down. It's all just a matter of time. And it's all dependent upon, you know, the Heavenly Father wanting to pull that wanting to pull that trigger when he wants to, right? You already see that Russia's in, China's in. He said it, right? And we already know this. They already have the uh, 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 technical capabilities, right, to, uh, to to bring America down. You know, take that take that electrical uh, electrical grid off the market, right? And, and and it just be complete and utter darkness in America. So check this out, because these are the same things that happened in ancient Egypt. Gross darkness. So let's get it. Second Ezra chapter fifteen verse ten. Behold, my people. Is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So the Heavenly Father is going, not going to let us, you know, just stay in this place. He's, he's going to deliver us out of this place. And just as he delivered us in ancient Egypt, he's going to deliver us again in modern day Egypt. And he's going to bring those same plagues back. Let's read it. Verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. 
and smite Egypt with plagues as before. So if this was talking about ancient Egypt, why is it talking about it's going to do it again as before? All right, because you have to be spiritual. You have to understand that this is not talking about uh, 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 ancient Egypt. You know, it, this is talking about America, Babylon. It says, and I will smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. All right. So let me go ahead and grab this uh, book of Exodus. All right. Chapter 10. So let's see what 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 uh what plague did the heavenly father smite Egypt with before? Now you, you, you will be familiar with some, but uh let me just go ahead and grab this one right here. All right, so Exodus 10 and 21, it says, Ha'adawan said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand towards heaven, that there may be us uh, it, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days, right? Let me, let me highlight this. It says, they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So the heavenly father is going to have for the elect, the remnant, right? He's going to allow uh, for, for us, you know, Yahweh Rathas, I'm a part of the elect. It's like it. I'm one of the elect, <clears throat> the 144,000, right? As well as you sincere, I am listening, you know, and if we're of the elect, we're going to have light, man. The heavenly father is going to uh, he, he's going to take care of us. He's going to provide for us. You know, it, it, it's going to be cool. Now, of course, we're going to have to go through some stuff, you know, because it caught, you know, uh, the hour of temptation is coming. Different things. Very tribulous times. But, you know, at the end of all that, the heavenly father is going to have us in a good case because what's contrary to that. Like it says in 2nd Ezra 9, he's going to have them in pitiful case who loathed his laws, who despised his ways. And that's not us, man. We don't despise the Heavenly Father. You know, we love the Heavenly Father and we show that, we show that through our works, man. Right? But the point of the matter is, Egypt is going to, is going to suffer from the same plagues. Modern day Egypt, America is going to suffer from the same plagues that it did in ancient Egypt. It says it in 2nd Ezra 15. That's prophetic. The Heavenly Father is saying that he's going to smite Egypt with the same plagues that he, uh, that he smitted before. Right. So it's going to be a bad, bad time, man. And we all know, you know, when, once electricity runs out, the food in your food, food in your refrigerator, that goes bad. The freezer. Right. The same the same for the food at the grocery stores, all the milk, uh, uh, egg, cheese, whatever, spoiled everything. The meat goes bad. Going to have some green stuff on it. You know, the frozen food is going to be all thawed out. Mushy fries, whatever, whatever, whatever these guys is eating. But the point of the matter is. Right. This is definitely coming. So let me go ahead and grab this. All right, because this is going to be a bad, bad time out here, man. You know, but not for the men of the Heavenly Father and those who pertain unto him. Of course, in the, you know, uh, the elect women as well, the, the one third. <clears throat> Amos 5 and 18, it says, Woe be unto you that desire the day of Ha'adawan. To what end is it for you? Yeah, what end is it for those, you know, the, the, these Christians or, you know, the guys that profess themselves to be Israelites? You know what I mean? But by not truly serving Yahweh, Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity. What in, what, what, what in is it for you? Right. Because we we read the scriptures and when we read the scriptures, it says, you know, uh, if you uh, if you don't, if you're not being diligent, you and your household will be overthrown. Right. And it says, you know, in second Peter, you know, if you're diligent, you should never you, you, you're never going to fall. You're going to be fine. You're going to be you're, you're going to make your calling and election sure. Right, you're calling. What's your calling? Coming into this ministry, knowing that you're an Israelite, going out in the highways and byways, right? So, what end is it for you if you haven't been putting in your best foot forward? Verse nineteen, it says, "As if a man did flee from a lion." It's like it, right here. Uh, I skipped a part. It says, "Woe be unto you that desire the day of Ha'adawan." To what end is it for you? The day of Ha'adawan is darkness and not light, right? So, of course, this is talking about you know how bad it's going to be, but it's going to be a physical darkness too, man. Right. Just like in ancient Egypt, the lights going to be out. People going to be going crazy, you know, running up in people's homes and whatnot. Matter of fact, it say that right here. Second, verse 15 and 19. It says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. And for great tribulation, it's going to be a great tribulation. People can't use their cars. You know, the gas stations won't work. Why? Because you can't get that. You can't get that gas out. Out of pump, most people don't even know how to, you know, siphon gas or, or, or do none of that other stuff to get it out the oil tanks underneath the ground. 
right? So a lot of people going to be starving because of these grocery stores. All the food going to go bad. You know, the food that, 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 that are non-perishables, people going to snatch that stuff right up, right? So there's going to be a lot of people, you know, just, you know, just doing a lot of, lot of uh, mischief out here, man, right? So let me continue on. It says, verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. So the day of the heavenly father, you know, especially, man, when these lights go out, that's, that's a part of Jacob's trouble, man. It's going to be so bad. It's going to be as if, a, as if a man was running away from a lion. And then as soon as he gets away from that lion, he ran into a bear. That's how it's going to be. When you, we watch these movies. As soon as you get away from one, one, one pack of... Uh, 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 crazy, 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 crazy people. You run into another pack, right? And then they snatch you up, tie you up, and throw you in a uh back of the uh back of the van or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And they do all this crazy, crazy stuff, especially if you're a woman. So we see it's gonna be a bad thing out here. It says, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. So you got you got away from the line. You got away from the bear, right? You, you you got into a house, you put your hand on the wall. All right, I'm cool now, right? And then a snake bit you, right? So literally showing you that there's no way, nowhere for these people to turn, man, right? Unless you have Yahweh, Yahweh shot with you. Let me get verse 20. It says, shall not the day of Ha'adawan be darkness and not light and very dark and no brightness in it. And that's 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 spiritually and that's, and that's, that's going to be physically as well. Ain't gonna be no dark. It's like it, it, it ain't gonna be no light, uh, unless for the sunlight when the day, when the, when daytime come, right? But it's gonna be a very very dark time, man. Let me go ahead and grab this the book of Isaiah, chapter twenty-four, in verse ten. It says, <clears throat> "The city of confusion is broken down." That's Babylon. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There's a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened and the mirth of the land is gone. All right. So that joy that everybody had, that mirthful spirit, you know, like it says in uh, Matthew 24, you know, they're going to be giving into marriage, they're going to be eating and drinking and, you know, just basically living it up until, the, you know, all hell breaks loose, you know, you know, like a thief, like a thief in the night. When all this stuff happens, it, these people ain't going to expect it. They ain't gonna know. They ain't gonna know where it's coming from. But you know, of course, you know, brothers been warning them. They haven't been taking heed. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and grab that and book it right here. Second Ezra nine. It says, Second Ezra nine and nine. It says, They shall be in pitiful case, which not have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Right. So that's the point, man. Oh, yeah. Verse 11, too. Let me read that. It says, but let me uh, break verse nine down. Basically, you know, everybody that walk past the camp, you know, when brothers are out there on the highways and byways, you, people that you tried to talk to, family members, you know, old friends in the world and whatnot that you tried to talk to and spit, you know, spit the truth to. Right. They cast it away. They didn't get down with it. They thought it was folly. They thought it was madness. Right. They even talk, you know, talk some some crap about, you know, the men that, that actually tried to teach him, man. Right. So they casted the heavenly father's ways, you know, uh, uh, away despitefully, man. <clears throat> OK. Verse 11, it says, and they that have loathed my law, while they yet had liberty as what as when yet a place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. All right, so they're gonna they're gonna die a, a painful death, man. All right, so when all these lights go out, we see we we see what, we see how this stuff happens over there in Texas when Hurricane Harvey hit. You see people uh, running out of stores with the TVs and whatnot. Uh, uh, prices on a pack of water at the gas station went up to fifty dollars for a whole pack. People was just you know just just acting crazy. It was a lot of uh, uh, raping and murder. You know what I'm saying stuff stuff was going down, man. Stuff was going down, and you see, you see that back then in um, Hurricane Katrina when it was in that dome. I heard, I heard a lot of people talking about that, man. You know, talking about it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of like, a lot of like, uh, like raping and stuff like that going on in that, uh, that little dome where they was at that that arena. You know where everything was happening at. You know, woman would have to go and use the bathroom. There's a bunch of guys over there in that bathroom. You know, ain't no cops around there. 
you know, people, people you know, the government didn't even want to send uh, people to come and rescue him. So you show a woman, she, she, she needed to go to the bathroom and something happened to her in there. You know, there's a pack of guys in there just waiting, plotting. And it's going to be the same thing, man. And we see whenever, whenever these people are faced with some type of adversity, you see the real side of these people come out, man. You know, ultimately, that's the Heavenly Father, you know, stirring that up. Because I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And that's judgment upon those people, right? Sorry, 39 to 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. So that's a sore stroke, man, when a woman got to go through something like that. And even some of these men, man, because, you know, you got some uh, some gips out here, right? That's going to be trying to uh, do some do some crazy stuff to the uh, to other men, right? Because we've seen that in, uh, I believe that was Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, they, you know, uh, grown behind men tried to, you know, have sex with the angels, man. Ridiculous. It says there be spirits which are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Yeah, because these same people, you know, uh, that, th that that stuff was happening to in Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, you know, over there in uh, uh, New York and, and whatnot. Hurricane Harvey in Texas, when all that stuff was happening, you know, the Heavenly Father was bringing judgment upon those people. So, those, so that, that, that those women that that stuff happened to, you know, the men, right? People that had to go through that stuff and got their houses looted and robbed and all that. The Heavenly Father caused that stuff to happen. Why? Because, man, these people were proud. These people were proud. I'm sure they probably heard about the truth, you know, and they were just living, living wicked lives. So, you know, of course, the Heavenly Father going to give you what you're going, you know, what's coming to you, man. All right. Let me go ahead and grab this. Um, matter of fact, since we own a women. All right. Let me grab this. Second as a 16 and 33 it says the virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. So this is this is the time that's coming, man. You know, all hell breaks loose. It's going to be every man for themselves. You know, like like that stuff that people see on the movies where women just like, you know, like a like a, a superhero type guy. You know what I'm saying? Of course, he, he don't got no powers, but, he, you know, he, he, he you know, he come and save the day and, and rescue the damsel in distress. It ain't going to be none of that, man. Right. These guys out here, these jakes in the world, they're going to be trying to fend for themselves, man. Right. That whole that whole like, you know, try to save the woman type spirit. Ain't none of that going to be happening, man. Right, and if it do, you know, that guy probably gonna get murked. Or it could be a setup. Alright, because you know that stuff is gonna be happening too. We seen that in the book of Eli. You know, the woman, you know, woman, you know, she's working with the pack of guys. So that way she got some type of protection. She lures the guy in and then, you know, the rest of the guys just jump the guy and take everything that he has. Alright, I'm gonna go on. It says verse 34 in the wars. Shall their bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. So a lot of these men gonna die of famine. And, and, and some, you know, some of their husbands, it's like their some of their husbands, yeah. And you know, uh, men that they were gonna marry, you know, they're they gonna die in the war. You know, they might go over there in the war when when all you know, uh when stuff really start popping off for Russia, you know, when NATO and Russia actually get involved and you know start going at it. You know, a lot of these guys, man, they're gonna die in the war, man. You know, leaving widows. Verse 35, and ain't, ain't nobody going to be here to help these women. Verse 35, hear now these things and understand them, ye servants. Right? Of how out of one. I'm going to skip to verse 7. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. So these plagues that's coming upon America, Babylon, Egypt, they're not slack, man. The Heavenly Father is bringing them to pass. All right? Look at this. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So that, so that time is going to come, man. Right. And we starting to see it. Right. It says, but at the end, it shall speak. And, it, and these prophecies are speaking. We, we seen them, you know, unfold right before our very eyes. It says, and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So it's it's like it's not tearing at all. It's, it's speedily and fastly and hastily approaching. man. We see this right before our very eyes. You know, but us men, you know, uh, of the heavenly father, man, those who are putting their brick in serving the heavenly father. Why Yahweh Shai in, in truth and sincerity, man? You know, we got nothing to worry about. All right. You know, we we have we have we have faith in the, the Heavenly Father. Why Yahweh Shai that we're gonna be protected and provided for us in our households, man. So we're gonna be good, but but everybody else, let's read it.
Isaiah 2 and verse 3. I'm going to end off on this, right? It says, and many people shall go and... No, 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 that ain't it. Dang, where is it? Yeah, verse 11, kind. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And Ha'adawan alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of Ha'adawan of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. All right, so this this is these people, man. I, and, and we ain't going to have no pity for these people, man. We are not going to have any pity for these people at all because they had a chance. They scoff, they talk shit. And then when they see that, matter of fact, I said I was going to end off on there, but I'm end off on this. All right, and when they see that everything that we've been saying is true, then they're going to try to get down. It's like that song with Mike Jones. You ain't, uh, back then, you ain't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. That's how it's going to be with the men of the Heavenly Father. Right? We're going to be as uh, we're going to be as fine gold, man. Right? He's going to, the Heavenly Father is going to make us more precious than fine gold. Ezekiel 33 and 33. And when it's come up to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. So that's the point, man. So they're going to know when all this, man, when all hell start breaking loose. Everything that them guys with the with the bed sheets on it, you know, you know, with the bed sheets on, screaming at white people, and you know, everything that you know, brothers been saying, it's coming to pass. Then they're gonna try to get down. So they're gonna try to get down. Like I believe that says that in Amos eight, man. When that famine of the word comes, and brothers ain't we, we ain't listening to that. We ain't trying to hear that because it's not genuine, right? So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna end off there. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Harakak Wadash. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shabarak and Thumb to all you sincere hearted true believers in this ministry. Shalom. Keep pushing.